Citizens of the Reject Nation, we are back with a very special Koi's Comic Corner catch up on commercials edition. It's hard to make all those C's just line up, but it does here. I am very excited to watch all of these trailers because I didn't watch a single one of them while I was out of town. I was hosting all sorts of insane panels at MegaCon. I sat down with Daredevil and Kingpin themselves. Me and Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio had a great conversation. I'm going to fill you in in a future episode. Lots of great stuff went down there. The great, the one and only Carl Weathers teamed up with James McAvoy to tell sorts of X-Men goodness. It was, it was insane. And most of all, my favorite part was I met so many members of Reject Nation. I saw more real Reject shirts than I have ever seen in the wild, and so many of you lovelies came up to say hello. So that meant I didn't have time to watch these trailers because I didn't want to watch them on my phone, and I wanted to share my experience of watching them with you. So I have, scouts on or not, watched a single one of these trailers yet, and now I'm going to do them live. We're going to start with Secret Invasion. We're going to go right into Blue Beetle, and then right from Blue Beetle into to the Across the Spider-Verse trailer and know how much I love you because I didn't watch an Across the Spider-Verse trailer without you. That was no easy feat. All I know is there's a Scarlet Spider frame because dozens of you sent me that frame. That's the most I know of the trailer. Please let me know in the comments which one of these trailers was your favorite. Please let me know in the comments if you were at Megacon and saw one of my panels because, again, I met so many of you. I want to see who your names are in the chat. And please let me know what you want next from this here comic corner. We are going into spring, which means we are going into summer, which means it is superhero season. So let me know what you want to see from this very corner. Without further ado, let's get into the Secret Invasion trailer. Fury. Since you've been gone. Still has the eye patch at this point. Much worse. Oh, no iPad. Why do you think I came back? This tone reminds me so much of Winter Soldier, which is exactly what I want. You're I need no grounded. For this fight that lies before us, old friend. <laughs> this is personal. Very few of us know about the wars fought in the shadows that have raged on this planet. Oh. Do you feel responsible? So that big scroll shot was new from the D23 footage. Where are the Avengers? This war is one I have to fight alone. man on the planet. You don't know what they have planned for you. The Great Nick Fury. June 21st is so close yet so far. Okay, Secret Invasion is one of my favorite runs in the comics because of its simplicity where it has an insane storyline. I actually think the modern Secret Invasion comic that just concluded like a month ago, I liked even more than the original. But the fun of the original comic is that it's one of those whodunits that can affect everyone and infect paranoia and everyone we had Jessica Drew be revealed as a scroll, and that had ramifications for, you know, 10 years prior and five years forward. There's a lot of big ramifications that can happen with a, a, a story of basically, like, conspiracy to this scale. I really like that the whole trailer feels like an espionage thriller. I mentioned Winter Soldier during it, but all of it feels like that heightened reality paranoia, and there's a lot of really fun details, like the Faces of Freedom is the label in front of all the presidents as we see the new guy we get turn into a bunch of multiple scrolls. We also get a big shot that we did not have D23 of these glowing chess pieces of all these scrolls laid out. Now, I think it was very publicly revealed that Amelia Clark plays a very specific role that ties into the newer comic book series. Very curious how that relates directly to Nick Fury, because it looks like Nick Fury is using a mausoleum as 
has a set a lot. I'm assuming that's a safe house. I'm assuming that's a place he's hidden out. He says it's personal while looking at his own grave. So there's a lot of backstory here with the Skrulls. And I really like that the Skrulls look better to me than they did in Captain Marvel. I don't know if that's budget. I don't know if that's evolution of tech. I don't know if that's just because they're darker and grittier. But that Ben Mendelsohn transformation, plus when you see that one Skrull screaming, look excellent. And that's on a TV budget. So I think that the best way to improve where Marvel is right now is to have a bigger dichotomy between the cosmic and the grounded. This looks very gritty, very grounded. Even the Marvel logo looked like it had splatter on it, whether that's steam or blood or whatnot. There's a grit to it that I think is the right move. And this trailer, along with what we saw at D23, this is about half D23, half new footage, is exactly what I think Marvel needs to be doing. So if you're going to go down to two movies a year and two shows a year, this is absolutely what half of them should be. Keep Marvel on the ground as well as in the sky. I'm so over ready for Secret Invasion. All right, now on to Blue Beetle. This is the first footage I have seen whatsoever. I have only seen the suit, so I'm ready to see what the tone, what the flavor, what the feel, what the Blue Beetle is. Let's get into it. Excuse me, <laughs> Mr. Reyes. You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? <laughs> All right. Man, I can't wait to see Sherlock killing him. I feel so out of reach. You always land on your feet, bro. You're hymen. They don't get out much. <laughs> I just want to rap. Jenny? I just want to rap. Guard, I bet you life. But do not open it. You went in to get a shop, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. You haven't looked? What the hell is that? How did you get it to do that? I think he likes me. He's on your back! Get it on! Hurry, This ain't what you want. 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 Oh, that's smart to distinguish from the symbiote like that. That's cool. What the? You host acquired. Who said that? Oh, it's like super, okay. like, the Giver. Oh. Oh. oh, my space. Free entry systems ready. Wait, 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 no, no. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Oh. What is going on? I just want to run. It's called the Scarab. It's some kind of world-destroying weapon. It's designed to protect its host. This ain't what you want. Sometimes it does what you want, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I, I think I cut a bus in half. The slow-mo hand touch. Nice touch. You, but it belongs to me. The low you feel for your family makes you weak. I just want to rap. The universe has sent you a gift. To figure out what you're gonna do with it. That's right. One, two, three, four, four, five, five. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Ah, <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah! Nice choice. I just wanna... A Final Fantasy sword. That's the move. Whoa. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. I just wanna. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes, and comic books reference. Okay, so we got Infinity, Omnibus, Blue Beetle Graduation Day, and the original Jamie Reyes stuff. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's talk about the Blue Beetle trailer. I'm going to get right into it. This is the fun I wanted. Now, Sholo looks absolutely perfect as Reyes. I honestly think, as far as casting choices go, this is the smart blend of bringing in a young audience because he's one of the stars of this next generation, and he's got the martial arts background. I, I honestly think a lot of him is going to be in that suit, plus the physicality, even if it's not the stunt work, just moving around in a suit. You want someone that knows their Z-axis, their use of space, their awareness of space when you've got a practical super suit that suit looks just as good as it did in those teased images as it did in those leaked images i've been waiting to see it in motion and it reminded me a lot of the guyver there was this 80s 90s movie that was the guyver i think it was mark hamill and that is a high compliment because practical suits work or they don't and this looks like one of those practical suits that absolutely works and you augment with cgi just like jurassic park all those years ago 
The reason Jurassic Parks holds up is that you've got practical dinosaurs augmented with CGI versus just purely CGI. The weight is different when there's a physical body in place. Then you add to that the family element, which totally ties into the comic book storylines. You add to that the playfulness of someone learning their origin story, learning to use these powers as they go along. It feels very much like, and, and don't get mad at me for comparing the two, but Phase 1 Marvel, when you've got a new world being introduced. So we think this is going to be the first of the DCU kind of rollover, rolling reboot. So some characters can stay, some characters will be rebooted, some characters will be brand new that might tie in. This looks like it could be beautifully independent of everything else that would allow for it to be part of the DCU. And I really like the feel of an origin story with him. I also really enjoy the imagery, the going out into space, the cutting the bus in half. All of that feels very much like a comic book origin story, but my only concern is this looks fun, and everyone has lately been using that as, like, a swear word. When a movie is fun, people, like, disavow it. I think this is what we want from superhero movies, the, the sense of play, the sense of wonder, the scarab itself. I didn't realize that Susan Sarandon was the big bad. That is a really fun playfulness that she can bring a darkness to this role. You know, she's an older actress that's got a lot of gravitas versus a younger actor that has all this gravitas. I really like what they can do with the dichotomy between like evil CEO that wants it for profit versus kid who accidentally was chosen by the scarab. In the comics, the scarab is very much like a symbiote. It wields control a lot of times. It takes over a lot of times. And it certainly looks like that's the case here. Add to that a giant Final Fantasy sword, the playfulness of what he would do with those powers. This looks like it captures the fun of Blue Beetle in a wonderful way. And I'd love to see it's a different Blue Beetle in the comic books, but this playfulness with Booster Gold. In the comics, it's the first Blue Beetle. He's the third. But I think this tone can work with Booster Gold if they decide to go that way with the Booster Gold show. Okay, hold on. Greg's interrupting me. He's in the room. He's right here. Yes? Last frame. Okay, checking the tape. Okay. Oh! Oh, we've got all three of the Blue Beetles. Okay, so this is exciting. Okay, I, I just mentioned he's the third Blue Beetle. The middle Blue Beetle is who I'm talking about teaming up with Booster Gold, the duality. So this implies to me that those have already existed and maybe I'll get my dream and I'll have a Booster Gold set in the 80s because it'd be a lot of fun if the future he travels back from is our near future. But if he goes back to the 80s, wherein he could team up with this original Blue Beetle and then this being the modern... Like today, Blue Beetle, that is, that is, yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you made me rewind. Now that's my headcanon. And if it's not the case, I'll be mad because now I'm a nerd on the internet. I would like that to happen. All right, it is time. And when I say it has been a difficult 48 hours to not watch this, when I say that this is my most anticipated movie of the year after the first one changed my life, I am so elated to dive into Across the Spider-Verse. Let's do it. <laughs> the animation in the in the tease. My name is Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. Oh yeah, you were supposed wow. to be here fine. All right, whatever. Whatever? Wow. Whatever? <laughs> so are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. Don't don't do that. Miles's grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? <laughs> okay. Miles, are you trying Mira, to kill that's my what I'm I gotta go. All right, I'm fine. He's lying to you. And I think you know it. What's up, danger? Miles! Wanna get out of here? Oh, when? Oh. So wait a minute. There's an Love them already. Who's the new Spider bug? This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Miguel O'Hara. The whole thing was his idea. What's a guy gotta do to join this spider team? You can never be part of this. Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 199999. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter. Miles. Mayday. You have a baby? I have a baby. Oh, little May Parker. I'll take it from here. Oscar Isaac referencing a universe he's in as Moon Knight is wonderful. Oh. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. <gasps> what are, Spot looks like he plays into the plot. I can't do that. I can do both. Spider-Man always. Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now. 
can't run forever, kid. I can't lose one more friend. The Bells isn't what we talked about. You knew? I had no idea what you're doing. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. <laughs> and then I looked at my uncle and uh, let me guess he died <laughs> 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 oh wow that was so much okay so that might be the greatest trailer I've ever seen I am so emotionally invested so immediately it does so much it doesn't reveal too much while giving you a lot of teases it clearly deals with loss. Spider-Man and being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. It looks like Miguel O'Hara has had to sacrifice everything, and something that specifically Miles does costs Miguel O'Hara everything. I'm very curious what that is, because it also looks like Miguel has accepted that, whereas Miles has to accept that maybe he loses his mom or he loses his dad to save everyone and he opts not to make that choice. It sounds like, to me, he tries to do both. Whether he succeeds or not is going to be curious because it's, this is across the Spider-Verse, right? There's a third film. I would bet the end of this film is a cliffhanger between whether or not he succeeds at doing both. If the entire universe... And if you look at the end, there's a thing that says text blah 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 to join the Spider-Society. Love that. Curious about that. Doing that right after this. But whether or not he chooses to save the everyone of the spider society the world or the mother or father he may lose i assume it's his mom because that shot of uh his dad falling feels like a bait and switch it feels too obvious so i'm guessing his mom but what's interesting is in the comics he's lost both of them they've both also come back what they've done in the comics is the ultimate universe kind of imploded there's a big incursion event but when it got reset there is an element that uh without giving too much away, he's able to do something that brings both of his parents back. Both of his parents are alive in the comics right now, and this actually looks more like more of the modern Miles Morales. He's aged up a bit, uh, both of his parents are still here in the storyline, and it's dealing with him fighting between school and being Spider-Man. In, in the current comic books, he's kind of accepted the fact that his grades cannot be as good and be Spider-Man, but he's still in that school. There's less ganky involved in the current comic books, and that's actually a point of contention, and some of the villains are, are in that school world, so I didn't see ganky in here. I'm really curious if, uh, you know, there's elements of his relationship with Gwen that maybe becomes that sacrifice. Also seeing Jessica Drew pregnant. Uh, like Jessica Drew as a mother is one of my favorite comic runs of all time. When she's got a little baby and she's balancing between being a parent and, and Porcupine Man is her babysitter. It's a whole thing. It's adorable. I love it so much. But this to me is a, a seemingly justified, rageful Miguel O'Hara. In the comic books, Miguel is one of my favorite characters because like a, a tiny example is his claws are claws to climb with. He actually leaves indentations in buildings. They they protrude and he uses them offensively. So like you can get mauled by Spider-Man 29 like Wolverine. He's got literal talons on the ends of his fingers. He's a more offensive Spider-Man. He's a Spider-Man that grew up when things were all bad. He grew up in Nuevo York, which is a really rough place. So Seeing a, a embittered and battled and boldened Miguel O'Hara fighting Miles is so special to me because it seems like they really captured that feeling while not sacrificing Miles' journey, his story of sacrifice, while not sacrificing his heritage. One of the things I love about Miguel is he's half Spanish, half Irish. His name is Miguel O'Hara. Not a lot of Irish uh, Spider-Man in the journey. So seeing, you know, all of that mixed with his character. Plus there's literally like Puerto Rican flags in this background and the snap and these little moments. They're really about the authenticity of what these characters mean to the culture they represent. Not to mention the different art styles like spider Gwen's world looking like one thing and his world looking like another. And I have to say the Lyle art L Y L E is the artist who designed Scarlet spider. It's maybe five frames of this. It's like maybe one second, half a second. It's less than a second. I think it is exactly Lyle's art, and it is the most 90s thing, and it looks like I couldn't dream of what Scarlet Spider translated would look like, and then they showed me it. 
The animators just gave me a thing that I couldn't have thought of on my own. They just hand-delivered something I always wanted that I didn't know how to quantify. That is the most powerful gift I can even explain. How do you make something in movement you've always wanted to see and didn't know even how to describe it, and they did it? They did that for me? They gave me the Scarlet Spider of my dreams. I love that character so much. I'm going to do a whole comic corner about why I love Scarlet Spider one day, and it's just going to be what I think he represents, and they captured it in, in like three quarters of a second for me. I am elated by this trailer. I'm excited to see that Spider-Man PS4 pops up there when the point starts, and that point joke is great, but it's also going to be very telling for storytelling. I think they're going to do a really smart thing and make that element a big shift. It's 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 so much. Uh, I, I can't do 20 minutes on just this part of the trailers, uh, but I am elated to see that it's not sacrificing Jessica Drew, Spider-Gwen, Miles, or Miguel for another story. It's not sacrificing what it means to be Spider-Man, which is sacrifice, and it's not sacrificing the first film's beauty to continue to escalate and elevate this story. This looks like a great part one of two, but it also looks like it's going to end like Empire, and we're going to need the return of the Jedi to bring us forward, and I'm curious if that goes into the Madam Web, if that goes into live action, if that brings in elements of other stories, um, because they reference Spider-Man from our universe, and that's also really messy with continuity. It isn't, it isn't Universe 616. 616 is the comic books. I don't know why Kevin Feige thinks it's 616. He would know, but I think he's wrong. I'm with Amon Vellani and Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099 here. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is 199999, not 616, and it's referenced here. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this movie. I, again, could do 20 minutes, but I have to stop. So those are the three trailers. Um overwhelm is what I feel. We're getting a really fun looking Blue Beetle. I'm not using that derogatorily like all these reviewers seem to do with movies that are fun. We're getting a very intense, grounded, and espionage-tastic Secret Invasion, which is exactly what it could be and should be. And we're getting maybe somehow a movie that is even more advanced and incredible and powerful than Spider-Verse in Across the Spider-Verse. That trailer, that's one of my favorite trailers of all time. I'm, I'm gobsmacked that that first movie came out of nowhere and changed me and Spider-Man. And this one looks to, like, up that. So let me know in the comments which one of these is your favorite trailer. Let me know if there's anything I missed. Let me know if you agree or disagree about any of the things I had to say. And let me know what else you want to see from Koi's Comic Corner. I am back home. Very excited. And if you have any footage from Megacon, if you have any pictures of us from Megacon, let me know in the comments. It was wonderful to meet so many of you. I can't believe that across the Spider-Verse trailer. I'm going to watch it, like, seven more times. That's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to say bye so I can watch it again. Bye, y'all. I love you.